Hello, my name is George Almulas and I'm a consultant neurosurgeon in Birmingham. I would like to thank IIH UK for the opportunity to present a new clinical trial that we have recently launched in the United Kingdom on the surgical management of idiopathic intracranial hypertension called IIH intervention. I work closely with Professor Sinclair, Professor Mullen and other clinician scientists and aim to deliver high quality research that drives forward the management of this condition. We believe that IIH intervention trial will answer an important clinical question that will change management of IIH in the UK and abroad. And as you can see at the bottom right of this table, people with IIH consider the question of the best type of intervention, one of the top 10 priorities for IIH research. This new clinical trial is led by the University of Birmingham, University Hospitals Birmingham NHS Foundation Trust where I work, is funded by almost 1.5 million pounds by the National Institute for Health Research, and the aim is to find the best surgical treatment to prevent blindness in people with IIH. The trial will compare the two most common surgical interventions that we use when people with IIH present to their doctors with a severe form of the disease, and an urgent intervention is required to lower the pressure in the brain. This pressure is transmitted to the back of the eyes through the nerves, and if it is too high, it can cause blindness, and therefore we need to lower the pressure in the brain quickly, ideally within a few days. One of the interventions is cerebrospinal fluid, or for short, CSF shunting, and the second one is called dural venous sinus stenting. They're both used in IIH, but there is so far no clinical trial to directly compare them and find out which one is better. I will go on to describe the two interventions in some detail. A shunt is a long thin silicon tube that is implanted in the body with surgery. There are two main types, the ventriculoperitoneal or VP shunt shown on the left and the lumboperitoneal or LP shunt on the right. The VP shunt goes from the brain to the abdomen and the LP shunt from the lower spine to the abdomen. The fluid is produced constantly and communicates between the brain and the spine and both shunts drain the excess fluid to the abdomen and lower the pressure around the brain and the swelling at the back of the eyes. They have a valve that regulates the flow of fluid and personally I think that VP shunts are better but there are surgeons that prefer LP shunts. A stent is a fine wire mesh tube that opens up a blood vessel. It is implanted by a new radiologist, again under general anesthetic. Stenting is often used in other conditions, like for example in heart disease following a heart attack, but more recently it has been used in idiopathic intracranial hypertension because most people with IIH have narrowing in certain veins of the brain called dural venous sinuses. A stent is placed in that vein, and as this animation that I found on YouTube shows, when it is at the narrow part of the vessel, it expands and opens up the narrowing, which then allows more blood to flow out from the brain and lower the brain pressure. We aim to recruit 138 people with IIH in this trial from across the country. People who are eligible to take part are those with a severe form of the condition who have severe swelling at the back of the eyes that if do not have surgery may go blind. The pictures on the right show what the eye doctors see when they look at the back of the eyes, the so-called optic discs. The top one is a normal eye and the bottom picture shows severe swelling, also known in medicine as papilledema. Thankfully, less than 1 in 10 people with IIH develop severe swelling and need surgery, and most are treated with medication and weight management. So only a small group of people with this condition will be eligible for our trial. People with severe optic disc swelling, who are of course suitable for both shunt and stent, can participate. Those people who had previous surgery for IIH, like for example a shunt, or those with significant eye disease, 
cannot participate and will be excluded from the trial. This slide shows the patient's pathway through the trial. Patients, of course, need to consent to enter the trial in the beginning, and then they will be randomized to one of the two interventions. Randomization is a process where a patient is selected randomly to either a stent or a shunt, and the chance is 50-50. Afterwards, they will have the intervention and then discharge home. They will then be followed with quite a few visits in clinic, which will be more regular in the beginning, to monitor the eyesight and other symptoms like, for example, headache. If in the meantime they suffer a complication, they need to present urgently in between visits to address the complication. Each individual patient will stay in the trial for two years and after the clinical data will be downloaded from a digital NHS database to capture long-term outcomes. This diagram is busy and shows the phases and time scales of the trial. I will briefly mention that we will be recruiting patients for 30 months and once we have 69 patients with a stent and 69 patients with a shunt, we'll then compare which group has better outcomes, meaning in which group the eyesight is better, which group has better secondary outcomes like headache, less surgical complications, and which intervention is more cost-effective in order to conclude whether a stent or a shunt is a better surgical intervention for idiopathic intracranial hypertension. This trial will run in many cities across the United Kingdom and will cover a large population area. We have recently opened our first site in Southampton and aim to open all sites within six months. IIH intervention is a complex trial and the clinical trial team has representative from four specialities as you see on the right, neurology, neuroophthalmology, neurosurgery for the shunts, and neuroradiology for the stents. We're looking forward to working with all our collaborators on this exciting new trial, and we're hoping that in about five years we'll have the answer on which is the best treatment at preventing blindness in people living with idiopathic intracranial hypertension.